explain our class rule and also syllabus and such uh, fundamental understanding on history yeah our subject is word history but in our course we will focus on political perspective because history is uh, yeah really a special subject because historian stated that maybe the fact is the same the data is the same but how to read them produce a different perspective and different uh, result and ideas so for example indonesia proclaim at 17 august 1945 yes that is the fact but how to read this fact from islamic movement from nationalists from communists from socialists they have a different explanation about the the time and the event sometimes also uh, different perspective on how something done at the time for example from islamic movement that tried to proclaim indonesia as islamic country stated that really the proclamation text firstly made by islamic movement that printed more than 10,000 paper bring from Bandung to Jakarta because they try to proclaim Indonesia in Jakarta but the proclamation text printed not in Jakarta in the middle road when they bring several texts bring to the Sukarno and Hatta so several items of Indonesian proclamation today they climb copy paste from texts from Cartos Wirio and friend one perspective the other perspective from Communist Party from Communist a movement Sukarno tried to delay uh, Indonesian proclamation because there is no not enough courage or brief to proclaim and after strong backup and support from communist element Sukarno uh, enough courage to proclaim Indonesia at the time is the other perspective from religious Islamic organization they stated that Sukarno at the time they don't have a uh, dead alternative to proclaim Indonesia Sukarno and friend confused and they come to the senior ulama Shay has draw to say Hasim as Ari to us when and how to proclaim Indonesia at the time. And after uh, Munajah and also Istihara and so on and so on, they decide if you want to proclaim Indonesia, please proclaim at nine Ramadan. Next nine Ramadan. Because uh, it is a good day in friday and also in the nine ramadan and ramadan is a nine uh, man so nine nine in ramadan 
and in Juma day, so it is good day. And after suggestion from Hadrat Sheikh Sukarno received this and proclaimed Indonesia, yeah, at 17 August 1945. And socialist movement also they have their own uh, explanation about this because Sukarni, Adamali. Uh, several activists in Rangas Dongklok absolutely they are not communist, not Islamic uh, movement, but they come from socialist movement. So they, Amir Safrudin, yeah, they have their own consideration that yeah, because of us, you can proclaim Indonesia and so on and so on. That is why history. Based on uh, historian intellectual perspective, history stated as multi reading object. One again, history as multi reading perspective or object multi-reading object. What's the meaning of this? It means that one fact, one event, one phenomena, one datum can be read with many perspectives that produce many explanations, that produce many ideas, then they have their own follower for each perspective or ideas. So it is not easy to understand history because uh, different perspectives will produce different ideas. In our object today, uh, history we will uh, view from political perspective. Yeah, uh, absolutely culture also uh, influential in this uh, what explanation because uh, maybe scientists or maybe society they have special perspective on history or politic influenced by culture yeah uh, it what uh, anthony giddon stated as constructivism constructivism everything imagined in our idea in our rationality really construct by uh, prior knowledge and uh, environment environment uh, environment in this context means culture so culture uh, very influential in our perspective making or formatting for example uh, maybe you come from a different uh, areas. Uh, several of you come from big city, from small city, and from uh, village. Uh, your perspective on politics, your perspective on government, your perspective on uh, human relation absolutely influenced by your prior experience and culture if you come from a uh, big city for example um, multicultural and also uh, mixed society uh, uh, cultural exchange is your daily uh, phenomena but 
if you come from village, maybe you live in monoculture. In monoculture. Yeah, maybe uh, agriculture, uh, small market, traditional market, and a very simple life in the future, in the village. So, <clears throat> your prior experience and knowledge produce your perspective. Yeah. In Anthony Giddon, uh, word, it is constructivism. 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 So, if you understand this, uh, it is easy for you to to what to understand and receive the differences maybe differences in the form of the culture or maybe differences in idea or opinion so if you understand oh yeah why a person uh, produce opinion like this why the other produce opinion like this why the other have uh, opinion like this in different opinions I mean you can understand oh because each of them opinion maker come from different background come from different uh, experience and knowledge background so it is very important to understand history okay so, uh, good history in this uh, semester. Uh, one again, we will focus to see the world history from the perspective of politics and culture. And culture. Our focus is this European Renaissance, Islamic civilization, and the rise of modern state. In the rise of modern state. Why this important? Because yeah really before renaissance before westphalia yeah westphalia is very important in the modern state because it is the momentum in european history to to come back in the world uh, podium uh, 1,000 or 10 centuries Europe yeah, not come to the world podium because uh, Islamic uh, society dominate world history at that time. So if you see the, the significant uh, technology really invented by Islamic society before Renaissance, uh, like camera. Camera is Arabic, Arabic word, lens, oh, what uh, alchemy or oh, chemistry, algebra, uh, book, cover, cover book, cover is Arabic, cover I mean uh, cover, so uh, camel. So, many, many uh, Western world really come from Arab until today. Uh, but why now uh, what history colored by uh, Euro uh, European uh, culture and politics? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because history always written by the last World War winner. In class of uh, public international law, I also stated this. Because international law changed significantly after World War II. Uh, so, it is about history really. That history written by the last World War. Maybe you have a long, long time background as a winner in Islamic civilization. 
But after the fall of Khilafa, uh, Kalipe, the Osmani in Turkey, just only 1945 after World War and uh, the fall of uh, Turkey Osmani is 1924, that is why Saudi Arabia proclaimed in 1925 because Yuki want to replace the influence of Turkey's money to Saudi Arabia, but uh, not successful program. Uh, uh, because a different, uh, what, a different situation and actor at the time. Okay, only from 1945 until today, the Western culture, uh, politics, and also science, can dominate world history until now. So, in the history, the permanent thing is only the change. Uh, so, what is the permanent thing in history? Yeah, the change. Uh, maybe today, United States and European countries as the dominant actor, yeah. But there is no guarantee in 10 or 50 years next, America and also Europe can dominate the world. Maybe the other culture and ideology or mixed culture, culture and culture interact each other to produce mixed culture. Because uh, there is... Uh, what adaptation assimilation now uh, we uh, we wait for new mixed culture in the world because after world war two until today there is no mixed culture but dominant culture defeat the minor culture once again after world war two Really, there is no mixed culture, but dominant culture and technology, they feed minor culture. We wait for the new world with new mixed culture. Maybe from Islam and Western culture. And now, really, China, India, they have more opportunity to uh, to influence world okay you see that china today very powerful there is no deficit in uh, national budget united states uh, the biggest deficit country in the world <laughs> uh, but china they have a divisa very very big more than uh, 200 trillion uh, dollars so it's a very big money to influence world today when the others in deficit they have uh, saving very very big saving in china <clears throat> okay uh, so after we uh, learn about renaissance and if we talk about renaissance really we will see the background of renaissance the the culture prior the renaissance in europe and surrounding the world like islamic islamic uh, civilization and after that we will enter the rise of the modern state until now uh, so uh, from Renaissance until World War II and World War II until now. So, very significant war in history. Why? The winner of the war will color or influence the after war uh, life. So, history always written by the winner of the World War, the last World War. So, um, 
This history is important. And how to read it? Okay, how to read it? I I mentioned before that history is a multi-perspective object, multi-reading object. That it is important for us to understand the other perspective to understand history. One again, it is important for us to understand the other perspective that different from our perspective to understand history. So you will see history from several or many perspectives. But in this lesson, in lecture, uh, we will discuss history and the political and culture perspective. Uh, is it important to learn about history? Uh, Confucius, uh, Confucius stated that study the past if you would define the future. Why? Yeah. In yeah, in secondary school, in yeah, maybe uh, elementary school, your teacher stated that uh, pengalaman adalah guru yang utama. So experience is the most uh, prominent uh, teacher in your life. It is if you study history, the meaning of experience of pengalaman means not your own experience, but others' experience. Pengalaman orang lain adalah guru yang utama. The other experience is the prominence. Teacher, why? If the other person do such an action and fail, not successful, it means that you should not to do this. Why? Because the other fail, and you should try to with your own and ways. So, experience means not your experience. But other experience, other experience means maybe in your time now, maybe in the past, maybe in the past. And study history will uh, meet many experience from other. How to live in real world. So you can avoid from the same. Uh, fail or unsuccessful effort if you study history. Yeah. You will see the pattern of human life and culture. Political change. You will see the pattern. Oh, after war, there is peace. And the winner will color after that. Oh, the surrender, the loser will go to the corner of the world. Although before the war, they can dominate or influential human life. Yes, this is the iron law. The pattern of world politics until today also. Uh, many time uh, like a circle come again come again come again and then. Uh, the more you know about the past the better prepared you are for the future yeah the Theodore Roosevelt so history can enrich our experience although not our own experience but it is enough to avoid the same fail failure and unsuccessful effort 
for our future. Yeah, change and continuity. History, we will see or learn about change and continuity. What change? What continuity? Perhaps the single most important one about history of a society is about a dynamism. Yeah, there is dynamism. Are we primarily interested in things changing? Absolutely. In a single second, our life is changing. In a single second, our life is changing. But how to make a good meaning in our second of life, in a single second of life, so you need to learn about how a wise person in the history plays a meaning in a second, in a single second of their life. Yeah, because in every single second of life is changing, so history also changing. But there is a pattern in history that we can learn about this. Or we are primarily interested in things staying the same. <laughs> staying. Staying mean not in uh, what in uh, fixed form, uh, established, uh, permanent. Yeah. There is no permanent in history and in uh, human life. Yeah, it is like a discourse between uh, Anthony Giddon and David Harley on globalization. Because um, in globalization, sometimes a majority change, but there is several traditional values still continue. Yeah, because globalization for such meaning really globalize the local norm or local values for example maybe it is too abstract for you <laughs> yeah. uh, for example uh, I believe that you have uh, levis or jeans Sometimes you wear this to yeah to campus yeah because it is uh, work from home yeah many students wear legend like uh, wear jeans or levis to campus and really jeans campus to campus is not American culture at the time not our culture at the time. And in America also, because in Kansas City, Jean Levis really not for official wear or uniform, but Levis jeans for mining, gold mining at the time. So there is a small, uh, small uh, what envelope in this uh, uh, jeans, uh, but. When Jean and Levi's introduced in global culture, uh, accepted by many other uh, social uh, what social levels, from mining to official users. Really, Levi's for mining, gold mining, diamond mining, but change to official, to campus. So, and it is to be global. So, this is 
globalization from the local. From the local. Uh, that is why the discourse between Gideon and uh, Harvey about what is globalization? Maybe the meaning of globalization for such a perspective is globalization from a local norm or local culture. Maybe. Oh, Kentucky fried chicken. Oh, hamburger. Hamburger. Donut. To be globalized, but really it's come from local. Or maybe kebab. Kebab is very special. Kebab, kebab. It's not European. Kebab from Turkey. From Arabic culture. To be global. So, oh, globalization. Uh, globalizing local culture. Yeah, in a such uh, meaning. Uh, technology uh, in globalization plays in more strategic uh, position. Yeah. Okay, change and continuity. In history, we will learn about change and continuity. Also about the conflict and harmony. Conflict and harmony. Conflict and harmony. Yeah. Harmony means peace. How fragile harmony of peace. How to make more permanent peace. Yeah. In another class, I stated that permanent peace or perdamaian abadi. <laughs> perdamaian abadi. Mean institutionalized peace. Perdamaian yang di dilembagakan. Institutionalized Peace. How to institutionalizing peace? Institutionalizing peace, we need more element. One of them, international law. To make more uh, realistic effort to make a good condition in world life or world society. We need history. We learn that how fragile peace that made by the peacemaker in such a piece of history because uh, many reasons, uh, different reasons for different case. But the most important thing is there is no permanent conflict. There is no permanent harmony, conflict, harmony, conflict, harmony, or conflict and harmony at the same time, but in the different places. Now, history talk about conflict and harmony. Yeah, this is our syllabus. Uh, yeah, I hope until the midterm, but I see maybe not enough uh, time. Maybe after mid also, uh, we still in this topic. Firstly, we will discuss on the Renaissance in Europe and Islamic civilization. Because when Renaissance happened, really the most dominant culture in the world at the time in medieval really Turkey money and their uh, cultural spectrum and then political spectrum yeah. there is no america where is america well, not exist <laughs> yeah not yeah america proclaimed in 19 uh, 1776 uh, before 1776 us uh, really still uh, as part of European uh, colonies. Renaissance in Europe and Islamic civilization. And then modern state and European war. 30 years war. Westphalia Treaty. Council of Europe. Yeah. Again and again and again we meet 
the discussion of Westphalia Treaty. If you talk about uh, political science, you meet Westphalia Treaty. Uh, international law meet Westphalia Treaty. World political history, you meet Westphalia Treaty. Yeah, because this is a very important momentum for modern uh, culture today. Imperialism and colonization. European imperialism, imperialism in Africa, Asia, yeah, including Indonesia. And uh, World War One and implication and also uh, Versailles uh, settlement. Uh, so, I hope we can finish this topic uh, until 8 meeting, maybe, yeah. And 8 meeting. Okay, and I have two book really, but I will uh, upload as soon as uh, possible after this uh, meeting. Uh, one of them is, this is the bestseller book, The World is Flat, <laughs> brief, uh, a brief history of 21st century. It is not talk about the word is flat, <laughs> it is very very catchy, very catchy title, but they really uh, describe what history and uh, international relation in reality. Um, and I will upload in your my class, uh, yeah, uh, a rather old book, but it is very comprehensive book on medieval century and before uh, so you can learn about European countries uh, Turkey Empire and also India Indian Empire and also uh, yeah uh, ancient uh, culture in the world history okay uh, I think it is uh, what I want to say in the first uh, meeting. So I hope you learn about uh, the second meeting uh, PowerPoint and maybe I will record. So uh, in the next meeting, we can continue our next topic. Okay, any question? Okay, uh, thank you very much and see you next and please keep in touch in your uh, my class because maybe I want to uh, give new thing in my class. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir. Thank you.